Good morning, Vietnam. The sleeping dragon awakens and begins to breathe once more. One of the most beautiful countries in Southeast Asia waits to be discovered. The North is still ruled by communism, but in the South, the hammer and sickle fades into capitalism that is gradually beginning to dominate all. One country and two lifestyles. Vietnam has opened up its borders. It's a country of beautiful landscapes, amicable people, and a great cultural heritage. The realm of Nam Viet was founded by a Chinese general in the second century BC. Today's Vietnam originates from those ancient times. Hanoi, North Vietnam's lively capital city, located in the north of the country and set amid the delta plains of the Red River. A large number of the city's inhabitants meet around a large lake for their early morning exercises. And the gods are also worshipped here. The Van Miu Temple was once Vietnam's first university. It is highly revered. The Ho Chi Minh Museum a concrete building three stories high was inaugurated in May 1990 to commemorate Ho's 100th birthday. Ho Chi Minh was the leader of a rebellion against the colonial authorities and on the 2nd of September 1945 he became the first president of the Republic of Vietnam. Among the military prizes of the nearby Army Museum, there's a MiG-21 and a T-54 bomber. The Jua Moko Pagoda is one of the oldest religious buildings in Hanoi. A temple built upon a single column in the center of a small lake. Jo Dong Xuan is the name of a large market. It contains a huge variety of goods and it's also where the local people do their adventurous shopping. Den Dao Quan, one of the most beautiful Taoist temples in Vietnam, is located close to the National Library, southeast of the Temple of Literature. Jua Dran Kwa is probably the city's oldest temple. It was once located on the banks of the Red River, but was relocated to this site in the 17th century. Inaugurated in 1993, the Tang Long Water Puppet Theatre is one of the finest examples of its kind in Vietnam and is so popular that its twice daily performances are a complete sellout. Pogo Hanoi, the old district that is also known as the town of 36 crafts, with various rectangular sections separated by walls. A red wooden bridge leads to a small island in the middle of the lake. Here, in the shade of a tree, is the Nok Son Temple. The Long Bien Bridge near the old town spans 1,700 meters across the Red River. On the site of what was once the city's largest Buddhist pagoda, Catholic missionaries from France built a cathedral. The majestic Hanoi Cathedral looks rather exotic compared to the other buildings. 
Den Quan Tan, the richly adorned temple of the great god, dates back to the 11th century and is dedicated to the Vietnamese god of war. Lake West is the largest lake in Hanoi. Hanoi is old but beautiful, the pearl of North Vietnam. On the journey south, the landscape highlights the fact that agriculture is still the country's most important industry. But the country of the dismounted dragons has become increasingly industrialized. Thus the country is going through a period of noticeable transformation. Both the traditional and the contemporary live side by side. In the Gulf of Tonkin, there is a large bay with more than 1,600 islands, the Bay of Ha Long. According to a 19th century legend, the origin of this beautiful island dates back to a naval battle between the Viet and a hostile people from the north. For several centuries, small boats have been in use in and around this picturesque bay. Today, it's also popular with cruise ships. The rich vegetation that covers the rocks acts as both a shelter and home for a huge variety of wildlife, including 40 species of bird and eight varieties of reptile. However, in recent years, both fishing and tourism have indicated the importance of conservation. These bizarrely formed rocks fired the imagination of those who lived here in ancient times. Several of the islands have colorful names. The delightful and natural beauty of Ha Long Bay is popular with one and all. This island's variety of rock formations, pinnacles and towers produces an outstanding and unique setting, particularly during the magical hours of dawn and sunset. Nature's many moods are an intriguing sight. A place of total beauty and one of the world's great natural wonders. The elevated and fertile Mai Jiao Valley contains green covered casted cones that are similar in shape to those of the Chinese Gulin. High above the Mai Jiao Valley, a number of Thai people are sitting at the side of the road. They're cooking a snack, corn on the cob. The narrow road travels higher and higher. It looks as though it's an integral part of the rock wall. It's the only way to reach the remote valley ahead, to another area that is inhabited by another minority group. The village of Ban Lak Thai, a peaceful place set within an elevated and fertile valley that due to its location is difficult to get to. The Thais were the original inhabitants of this valley, but several battles and wars forced them into the mountains. Here there are both white and red Thai people. As in Mai Jiao Valley, here the people live in simple wooden dwellings supported by wooden posts, with roofs made of dried reed.
Officially, there are 53 minority groups in Vietnam, and mountain tribes inhabit two-thirds of the country. On the arduous journey to the next village, we meet a group of people that are fishing with large nets. At first sight, there's nothing particularly unusual here. This village of the Muong people is quite small and the simple houses are once again supported by posts. In these parts, village life is very much alive and well. Everyone helps his neighbor. In this way, these village tribes survive and retain their individual identity. On the shores of the Perfume River, the Song Huang Zhang in the heart of Vietnam, is a former royal city and today's provincial capital of Hue. Nine mighty cannon are the symbolic guards of this historic citadel. Beyond this defensive structure are 500 hectares that contain the imperial city and also the forbidden purple city, a city within a city. The rise of Hue into a magnificent residence is closely associated with the Nguyen royal family who influenced the city for many centuries. A short boat trip on Perfume River leads to another of the city's attractions. Located on a hill, Legend has it that the Tian Mu Pagoda, built in 1601, owes its existence to the appearance of a god disguised as an old woman. The story goes that the woman made a prophecy that a new king would come and build an important pagoda for the gods. In the south of the former capital of Huei, are the spacious tombs of the Nguyen emperors who reigned in the 19th and 20th centuries. Three years in construction, the tomb of Tu Tuk was completed during the lifetime of the emperor in 1867. Unlike the citadel, most of the emperor's tombs were spared from major damage, and so many of the original buildings have survived to the present day. With no effort or expense spared, Emperor Kai Din ordered the construction of his tomb long before his death. We travel further south. The road without joy was what the Americans called this 100-kilometer road between Hue and Da Nang. Here, Cloud Pass has to be crossed. Hostile events once took place here. Yet today, it's one of the most beautiful sections of the journey. Next, we reach the Marble Mountains. Many a temple and palace derived its marble from this area. Animals, tiny fountains and images of gods are also created from this beautiful stone. Here on overgrown rocks, the precious marble is used as a building material, such as for the pagodas that are located on the hills beyond the village of Quang Nam. Several steps and pathways have led to various caves, pagodas and vantage points since the reign of Emperor Min Meng. Since that time, this complex has been a popular attraction. 
It was originally an island surrounded by the sea. We travel further south on the Mandarin Road. Emperor Minmang had this road built to connect Hanoi with Saigon and thus to consolidate his realm. We pass China Beach, a long sandy beach once used by the US military to recuperate after battle. The tiny dreamy harbour of Hoi An. Today it's difficult to believe that 300 years ago this was one of the most important seaports in Vietnam. Life continued here as normal until, in the early 1990s, the tourist industry began to develop in Vietnam. Whether on the riverbanks of the Tu Bon, the narrow streets or the fascinating shops, Hoi An has retained the colourful atmosphere of bygone times. Many of the city's meeting halls, temples and homes are of typical Chinese design. Both the Quan Am Temple and the Quang Gong Temple date back to the 17th century. The Quan Tung building is one of the city's oldest civic properties. Both architecturally and culturally, Hoi An has been influenced by two nations, Japan and China. And even today, Chinese influence is omnipresent. Five Chinese tribes once dominated the daily life and trade of this prosperous harbour city. Hang Hang House unites various Asian architectural styles. An impressive mixture of Chinese, Vietnamese and Japanese elements. A 17th century emperor decided to prohibit contact with foreigners, so the majority of Japanese merchants were forced to leave Hoi An. But once again, it is beginning to prosper. And the historic ambience of this intriguing city may well mark a new beginning for the inhabitants of Hoi An. Da Nang's Cham Museum boasts a fine collection of Cham sculpture from the surrounding provinces. contains more than 300 exhibits divided into 10 rooms with sandstone deities, monsters and heavenly dances. Its latest attraction is a modern place of worship that commemorates Ho Chi Minh, an open tower with supporting beams that meet at the top. The interior of the main dome was decorated by modern wall paintings that feature various scenes from times of revolution. As the city is situated on the river Han, both fishing and the city's fish market are extremely important. The new market hall has a wonderful array of fresh seafood. This crowded, though colourful market has the finest selection of goods in the city and it's well worth a visit. It's also a good place to take a photo. Da Hang is the junction of both North and South Vietnam. In the 19th century, the city developed into an important harbour and in 1965, American troops landed here. 
the rocket city was later totally destroyed. The central train station looks rather functional. But from here, we begin a unique adventure, a train journey to Na Trung. We travel further south along the coast on the S1 Vietnam, a 12-hour journey on the only railway line in Vietnam. We pass the endless paddy fields that cover the land between the coast and the railroad. As in times of old, the paddy fields are still ploughed by water buffalo. With the introduction of compulsory collectives in the 1970s, the production of rice diminished, but today, Vietnam is the third largest rice exporting nation in the world. Vietnam's rice consumption is around 170 kilos per person per year. It's harvested twice a year. The train stops frequently at numerous small stations. Apart from buses and a few private cars, the train is the only means of transport for most people. Many new settlements have originated alongside the railroad as many settlers from the north have moved into the fertile south. Agriculture is still Vietnam's most important source of income. The fields are often small, but they cover a total of 20% of the country's land surface. The train stops longer in the larger stations in order that passengers can visit the shops that flank the railway. We're almost at the end of the line. Finally, we arrive in Nga Trang one of the country's most important fishing harbors and also one of the most attractive bathing resorts on the South China Sea. The view of a large bridge at the mouth of the river leads up to a flat hilltop that is crowned by two Cham towers that date back to the 12th century. This sanctuary is dedicated to the main goddess of Cham, Po Naga. Legend has it that this goddess once taught agriculture to the local inhabitants. Above the entrances of both towers are stone images of Apsaras dancers, Shiva and Nataraja. On the other side of the river, the monastery complex of Lon Son extends across the entire side of a hill, a place of contemplation. On the hill is a 14-meter-high snow-white Buddha statue that was built in 1963 as a memorial for the monks and nuns who became martyrs due to their protests against the Diem regime. Po Klong Garai is an important Cham sanctuary that dates back to the 13th century. It was built during the reign of King Sima Varman, 
when Cham culture was at its zenith. It is believed that the Chinese who settled on the coast were the ancestors of the Cham. They had previously emigrated to China from Siberia. Between the 6th and 10th centuries, the Cham controlled the spice trade in Southeast Asia. They traded as far as India, Arabia and China. They lived according to Hindu philosophy. Their head of state was a monarch who was worshipped as an incarnation of the god Shiva. He was both leader and religious authority. The caste system ruled society, from the godlike nobility right down to the slaves. In 1471, the Cham realm disintegrated. Their rule came to an end. The journey to the inland covers more than 100 kilometers of narrow, winding roads up to a mountain region covered with tropical vegetation, to the city of Eternal Spring, a place to relax in the hot summer months. In the exclusive mountain resort of Da La, the last emperor of Vietnam, Bao Dai, had a summer palace built within a cool pine forest. Surrounded by a splendid park, the palace is more like a gigantic European villa of the 1930s than a palace. The furniture, antiques and various gifts from foreign dignitaries, plus the unique atmosphere of this place has helped it to retain its special character. In August 1945, Emperor Baldai abdicated and went into exile in France. All those who enjoyed high office in colonial Vietnam spent their summer months here. Thus, Dalat has survived intact. Following independence, tourism boomed and the city, along with its lake and charming surroundings, became a paradise for the newly united people of Vietnam. Named after a female poet, a walk around Zhuan Huang Lake is a splendid experience. Now begins the final leg of our journey south, from the highlands down to the Mekong Delta. A journey through a totally natural landscape, with endless tea and coffee plantations, waterfalls and hidden temple complexes. Close to Dalat is a Buddhist temple complex that has recently become extremely popular with the faithful, the Tuyen Lam Pagoda. Buddhism has its roots in Siddhartha Gautama, the son of a North Indian prince who sought total understanding and eventually found his enlightenment in Buddha. On the basis that nothing in the world can last forever, Buddha developed four noble truths that can only be attained by man by way of several incarnations.
Buddhism came to Vietnam in the early centuries of Christianity. The fertile highland around Bao Loc is the center of both tea and coffee plantations. Endless fields line each side of the road. The local mountain tribes work in these huge and profitable plantations that today are mainly in private ownership. The cool nights and intense sunlight helps to produce one of the best and most expensive teas in the world with a very special aroma. The women of the Ma minority tribe pick tea leaves and collect them in large baskets that are secured by a headband. In addition, more than 10,000 hectares contain mulberry trees for the largest silkworm farm in Vietnam. But this region is also known for its impressive waterfalls that are at their most spectacular following the monsoons. Due to an astute businessman, this natural spectacle can be observed from the safety of a cable car. A fascinating sight. At the delta, the first floating villages at the roadside. Some of the local people live in these flat cabined boats. Several boats make up a small community to satisfy man's need to feel safe and secure. Small boats are powered by the legs. In contrast to the simple way of life here, modern technology such as television is also part of everyday life. A short journey towards the Cambodian border leads us to a temple of the Khao Dai sect in Tay Ninh, a confusing combination of Eastern and Western design. The omniscient eye that is worshipped as the most revered being decorates the large portal of the long main temple that is located in the center of the complex. The melange of architecture is a symbol of the sect's philosophy that unites elements of Buddhism, Confucianism and Taoism as well as Christianity. A colorful mixture of painted images range from Buddha to Jesus and snakes and dragons decorate the temple's spacious interior. At the end of the hall, the high priest's altar is overshadowed by a gigantic ball. At the beginning of the 20th century, the decline of various ancient religions left a vacuum so, in the south of the country, sects such as the Khao Daismas were formed. At noon each day, an orchestra that plays traditional instruments accompanies a religious ceremony that can also be observed by visitors from a side balcony.
Here in the Mekong Delta live many followers of this religion that is unique in the world. And next, a once small trading center that is situated on the large river from which it derived its name, Saigon. With nearly six million inhabitants, this city that is also known as Ho Chi Minh City is large, but is no longer the capital of Vietnam. The Ho Chi Minh Museum commemorates the country's great leader as the national hero who gradually steered his country to independence. Most of the rooms in the former president's palace are just as they were in 1975 when the palace was taken by the Viet Cong. The History Museum was built in 1929, according to Neo-Vietnamese design, and features a large range of fascinating exhibits from each epoch of the country's history. The former National Museum is now of international status. The Botanical Garden was created in 1864, during French colonial times. Jade Pagoda, the Temple of the Jade Emperor, highlights the country's religious faith. The interior features Taoism in all its splendor. It was here that it all began, at the junction of the Ben Nghi Canal on the slowly flowing Saigon River. The city's largest church is located in the center of the administration district, Notre Dame Cathedral. It was consecrated as the Church of Holy Mary in 1883. The Ben Tan Market is Saigon's largest market. It was built in 1919 and is covered by a huge dome. The clock tower is one of the city's main landmarks. There's also fresh meat and poultry and fish. In addition to Buddhist temples and Catholic churches, Saigon contains various other sacred buildings, such as the impressive Mariamman Hindu Temple. The Van Hua Park adjoins the area that contains the former presidential palace. It's popular with the local people, an oasis of relaxation. The name Jolon means big market, a lively commercial district with many family businesses conducted in crowded shops and narrow lanes. The wealthiest temple in the heart of Jolon is dedicated to the patron saint of seafarers, the Tian Hao Pagoda, built by the Canton Chinese in the 19th century. The young visit the War Museum to learn of the country's saddest chapter of recent history, the Vietnam War. The history of the Giac Lam Pagoda can be traced back to 1744. It is not only one of the oldest, but one of the most beautiful. Traditional ceremonies are extremely popular in Vietnam, such as the wedding ceremonies that are alive with both music and dance. The serene ritual dances of the royal court are performed by women. It is said that music and dance reflect the character of the population. Thus, the Vietnamese are a very charming and fascinating people. We leave Saigon, the easy-going Paris of the East, and travel further into the Mekong Delta. Mm -hmm. 
Mito is one of the towns in the delta with a special charm. The river is the main source of income of its inhabitants. But tourism is becoming increasingly important here. The immense value of this fertile land has been appreciated for many a year, as the Mekong Delta yields up two or three rice harvests each year. An almost timeless feeling of disorientation sets in within the numerous waterways and tributaries of the Ku Long, as the Mekong is referred to by the Vietnamese. Ku Long, the Nine Dragons River, as the Mekong is also known, does indeed divide into nine wide rivers at its estuary. The country's increasing industrialization also began to transform and endanger the environment, as man penetrated deeper and deeper into the wilderness. Despite early settlements, many areas have remained uninhabited and unspoiled right up to the present day. The delta has a very rural appearance due to its well-tended fruit trees and paddy fields that are cultivated by various farm villages. The road travels through the fertile delta soil of the Mekong to a large and modern suspension bridge. Suddenly, Vinh Long appears, the province's main town of the same name. It's a good place to take a short break while journeying to Canto. This town is also dependent upon the river. Many of the houses are situated on the river bank, and boat is the fastest and most comfortable means of transport. There is little flooding following the rainy season as the excess water flows into the Tom Lem Sap Lake in Cambodia that is located at a lower level and serves as a natural reservoir. After agriculture, fishing is the second most important industry in this region, and traditional fishing boats are a frequent sight. A peaceful idyll set amid a fascinating landscape. The extensive delta of the great Mekong River of South Vietnam is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable natural habitats in the whole of Southeast Asia. The dense vegetation on the riverbanks and brown-colored water of the Mekong with its innumerable creeks are the main characteristics of this, the third largest delta in the world. The estuary covers a total area of around 39,000 square kilometers. Only the deltas of the Amazon and the Brahmaputra are larger than that of the Mekong. Since time immemorial, this richly fertile land has attracted settlers. Between the 1st and 6th century AD, this region was ruled by the Funan Kingdom. There is much interest in the early history of Vietnam. In the 20th century, the Vietnam War raged in the Mekong Delta. Since that time, nature has healed the scars of war. 
The maze-like tributaries of the third largest river on the Asian continent has an idyllic, relaxed and peaceful atmosphere. Large church buildings suddenly appear from within the jungle. Catholic monks had them built. Up until the middle of the 20th century, vast areas of the estuary were covered by dense forests and the majority of the waterway areas were uninhabited. A journey down river leads us to a special attraction, the small town of Pung Hiap, where hundreds of boats gather each day. Here a floating market takes place each morning. At the junction of seven waterways, farmers, tradesmen and their customers rendezvous on the water. The colourful hustle and bustle can lead to some pretty chaotic situations, but the boatmen usually manage to somehow extract their boats from the traffic jams that accumulate. In addition to farm products and general goods, there are also floating restaurants that provide an extensive range of fresh and tasty food. Shopping creates a healthy appetite. For visitors, it's a rather exotic spectacle, but it's always been an integral part of life in Pung Hiap. The floating market of Pung Hiap is now one of the few of its kind in Southeast Asia. A fascinating place with a long tradition and of much cultural significance. More than 4,000 kilometers lie between the source of the Mekong within the sparse highlands of Tibet to its extensive fertile delta in South Vietnam. This, one of the largest rice producing areas in Asia, is surrounded by a veritable paradise. From this region alone, almost a million tons of rice are exported each year. Dense and beautiful tropical vegetation manifests itself in many fascinating shapes and sizes. The ferry boats are the only means of transport across the tributary. They take us to the final and southernmost destination of our journey and to a city that is vital to the delta. Canto is the fourth largest city in South Vietnam. It's situated on the right-hand side of the river Basak, that is almost two kilometers wide at this point. A modern provincial town was built here within the Mekong Delta under the strict supervision of Ho Chi Minh, for whom there are numerous memorials here. Life here is determined by the river. 110 kilometers down the river is the South China Sea. Funan was the first cultural realm of the peninsula, but little remains of its settlements, towns, culture and works of art. Chinese history 
describes a people of traders, workers, farmers and seafarers who were also feared as pirates. These people eventually moved to Cambodia. The Delta gradually fell into oblivion until in the 17th century, the Vietnamese began to cultivate the land once again. Vietnam was once called the Pearl of the Orient. From the nostalgic atmosphere of the Red River Delta in the north to the pulsating life of the Mekong Delta in the south. And lying between these, an unexplored land with colorfully clothed mountain tribes and fascinating landscapes. Vietnam, a paradise located on the exotic edge of Southeast Asia.